Thank you very much. Uh, I want to talk about a very interesting and a kind of rare thought or idea about how to find your place, how to find your natural place, how to find your talents, your gifts, and what actually you are given, which actually they are the ones that serve your purpose. So the question or the topic or the title that I'm going to handle this afternoon is what tells you your niche or your natural home? What is it that tells you your niche or your natural home? That's what I want us to think for the few moments. And if you're going to follow, you'll notice after the talk, that is um, uh, after a short while, you'll have really understood why many people don't understand and why just a few understand exactly that. What is a niche? Ecologically, I want to explain what a niche is. This is a place where living things are actually connected to a natural network or rhythm. That is a place where an organism or a living thing makes the most by the least. It is a place where that live, same living thing is able or is co more, most comfortable as it plays its role in the ecosystem or in the environment. Now, this is going to apply also to human, um, human beings as you go on. For example, you ask yourself, why do the ants up to this 21st century, why are they able still to keep, they will maintain their roles or their castes? How has that happened? Yes, why does the cock still crow at 3 a.m. in the night or around about that time from time immemorial? Why has it been able to maintain that? This is why we are saying the, the living things are connected to a natural network or a rhythm. And this is what makes them able to do what they do. Like for example, the migratory animals, like the wild beasts, like the ducks that uh, move from, uh, from thousands of miles to the south or, to the, to, the, or to, the, to the north of America, for example, and many, many other places, and other birds. Why are they able to do that? Like now here in East Africa, one of the tourist, tourist attractions is the wild beast as they move from Serengeti to Mara and you know, back and forth. How are they able to do that? They are actually, first of all, in their niche, and then in their niche, they are, intercon they are connected to some natural network or some natural... Now, any interference with their genetics or something like that, or their behavior, disconnects them from that network or lithium. What do I mean? For example, like the cock. When you improve the cock to a certain level, especially if you do any genetic engineering on the cock, the cock will grow faster and many other things will happen. But one of the disadvantages is that we are going to have the cock not able to catch the rhythm or the network, the natural one, and it is not able to keep that time, that 3 a.m. something, you know, time. So many, we have to be aware of that, that we can interfere with the nature and then it is lost or is disconnected from the natural network or lithium. So being in the niche or finding the niche or remaining in the niche means the organism or the living thing, and a man is an example of that, is connected to the natural network and they're able to keep with the lithium. That's what we're really talking about. That's really what divine need. Niche is both the natural home and also where the role, the natural role is played. That's what a niche is. And we are going to see that now when it applies to the humankind. Then the other thing is that uh, now we want to ask ourselves, is mankind artificial or natural? Because I think that is a, of a lot of curiosity. Yes, man is natural. But they are able to do things also, and what they do is what is artificial, but they themselves are natural. And before we go on, the question is, is man connected to that natural network? 
that they are, the rest of the living things, the plants and the animals are connected. So uh, we want to look at that and consider what, yeah, what Solomon uh, said in his uh, book. Solomon was, uh, was actually is the wisest man in the history. And you, if you have read this book, or if you have not, or you have not, but this is, he did a lot of good research on the, res the, the reason of things that you can get it from the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 7, verse 25. He was re researching on the reason of things. Things don't just happen. And in the universe, everything has a meaning, has a reason. And so, whatever we are looking at, how the animals, the plants do, and other things, and even how, what we are supposed to do or not do, there is always a reason behind these things. Therefore, now, in the human being, they seem not to be connected with the natural network. Because if you look read the book of Genesis at the beginning, mankind lost something. When he fell from grace, he actually lost some, the connection. So there's a missing link that actually accounts for most of the human adversities that we know about. So man as a result or as a consequence has lost the, 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 the self-identity. They are suffering from identity crisis. If you ask them who they are, they, it's, uh, it's difficult. In fact, one of the most difficult questions that you can, be, you can encounter in an interview is who are you? Can you describe yourself? It's uh, very difficult because of the loss of identity. Now, this is, means there's a missing link in the human mind or in the human design. This can be uh, accounted for by what happened now in Genesis. So man is not able to identify themselves. They are not able to generate uh, personal data or, or gather it. They, are, they seem to have, man seems to have a blind spot or a deaf spot from where they are not able to see themselves as they are seen by other people, listen to themselves as they are listened to by other people. And this is what really has contributed to the identity crisis. Now, we have Johari Widow that was uh, done by some guys that uh, they did in about the 1950s. And what they said is that there are things that you know and other people don't know, the four, the four parts of the widow. And the other part is what people know that you don't know. And then there's a part which you know and other people know. And then the fourth part is where you don't know and other people also don't know. So there's an area of man. And this area that nobody knows about, both you and the people, may be where the most important things are found. But of course, we know that part is still known by God. The creator knows exactly what or about you. Now, uh, so we realize that uh, we need a personal search. And this personal search, because of the missing link, something has to come from outside. And this is what we're going to see maybe later on as inspiration. Inspiration will always come to provide the, the missing link. Because man does not use instinct by, like the rest of the animals, they are, they're the creatures. They use intellect. But this intellect requires some, something else. That's what we are calling the, 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 the inspiration. So in my personal self search, after realizing these things, what have I done? I have tried many things. I tried the accounts. I also did some paravet. I also, after that, I did uh, something in uh, soil science. I've also done uh, something uh, in a lot of uh, applied biology. Later on, I've done uh, uh, and on something on the environment. So you see, if you look at that, maybe it may not make a lot of sense. It's actually a jumbled kind of uh, CV. Why? I was still searching for myself. This self-search is, um, is mandatory for anybody that would want to live a meaningful life. So, we let, we now, in this self-search, what are we supposed to do? Here is a formula. You have to come up with three, generate three uh, lists. These three lists are made out of practical experiences. Now, you start from your past, the farthest that you can remember, and maybe you are reminded by some people, 
And then what happens is that it must be out of practical experiences. What you did worked for you. What you did, you did and didn't work for you. So the three lists, one of the, 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 the parts of the list is what you are naturally able to do and what you love doing. Now, that's the abilities and the interests. Sometimes the abilities are also called the flares. The interests are also called, uh, sometimes are called the, the passion. Yes? And then I am going to use what uh, I, uh, Howard Gardner called the multiple intelligences. That, to me, I will call those the abilities. And on the other hand, what uh, Steve Ru Rudolph called uh, multiple natures. These are going to be my interest or the passion. Now, these two are the two main lists of those things that you, you are able to do naturally, those things that are interesting to you or enjoy doing naturally, and then there is an intersection. Where they intersect is, where, is what is very important, and that's where what we are going to call our niche, is the intersection of your natural abilities and your natural interest, and then the product thereof in the intersection is what brings the best out of you. Both your mechanics, that's the abilities, and your dynamics, that's the interest or the passion. When they are combined, the whole of you is engaged. And when the whole of you is engaged, this is where the most or the best is actually brought out, out of you. Therefore, with the human niche now, this is, we have already said that it is where inspiration finds you. You don't go looking for inspiration. If you are looking for the inspiration, means you must be looking for your niche. It is in your niche that inspiration comes, because inspiration is natural. It comes to your niche. If it doesn't find you there, then you realize that uh, you, have, you, you do things that you, don't, you are not inspired to do. Now, when inspiration finds in your niche, it activates the gifts, the talents, or the calling. And uh, within your niche, another sign is that the Pareto rule of 2080 also applies whereby we will put 20 and uh, output 80. So it means if you are in your niche, the energy you put in, the inputs, they always be less by far to the output. Therefore, uh, then for example, it is from this intersection of the abilities and the interests, where now it actually, actually with this, your niche options are captured in that intersection, and then in there, you can get your niche within the academics using that. You can get your niche in sport using that. And uh, also the social, what you can do for the, the you know, the so socially speaking, what you can do from this niche options. You can be able to get what you can do out there using what is captured or supported by the two things that are in there, that are in the niche. The business, the job, and even a lover, the one, the person that you can marry. You can be able to use, from the niche, you can be able to tell who actually fits you from there. But when we move from the niche, then we don't know what to do. We can get other things that are really not naturally suitable for us. So we are saying that when we identify this niche by those characteristics, then we know we are where we are, and the sign is that things work out. We are able to make the most by the least. We are able to input little and we get much. Just like you would use a seed, a maize seed, for example. At its best, it's able to produce other 500 seeds or grains. Yeah? So that means everything is suitable. The environment is suitable for it. And that's how you, yeah, by seeing that kind of an output, you are able to tell that actually you are in the niche. So uh, to further describe this, uh, the niche, we need to have the two circles that I've already mentioned that are intersecting. Then, when you draw like that, and we have said this is abilities, this are interest, then in the intersection here is what we are calling the niche. And using this niche now as another circle, we can now interact it or intersect it with many other things, like for example, business options. Yeah? So using this now, we can, uh, business options, we can uh, uh, intersect it with the academics and see what we can, from the niche,
from the abilities and the interests that are already here in the niche. What is captured here and at its best, we can see what that would mean academically. And that is your, your academic niche. And all the other options that we're talking about. So from here, you are able to tell even what kind of a job would fall within your niche. Time you, you operate from the niche here, or using your natural mechanics or natural dynamics, or the natural abilities and interests combined in the intersection here, then you are always able to get the best out of you, and at the same time, you are able to, to use the least to get the most. And that is the only situation that you can find yourself enjoying. You are productive enough, you are enjoying, and that's what was meant naturally when uh, the creator put these things new. And again, this part here is actually found genetically new. It is also, actually this originates from your DNA. So it uh, can even be inherited by your children. So it can be also expressed now through the, 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 the children, the, the, the progeny. It is something so real, but yet it is discoverable. And without using this kind of uh, formula that we've talked about, you expose it practically and see what happens, capture the data there, then it becomes very difficult to tell. And that's why, because of now the missing link we said, where, where we are not able to listen to ourselves, we are not able to, uh, to, 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 to look at ourselves or observe ourselves, this is the, part, the thing that has caused us not able to know ourselves. Just like if you, when you asked, well, can you describe your voice? Can you describe your working style? We are not able to naturally do that. That missing link contributes to why we are not aware uh, automatically what we have. So we require some kind of a medium. We require some kind of an exposure experience that makes us see that what is in us expressed out there. Without that, then we, become, we, we, we are in a problem. Now, to, to that effect, I've written this book. This book is actually on the missing links to self-discovery and actualization. What is it about? It is able to capture these missing links that we're talking about, this thing, the phenomenon that makes us not able to understand ourselves uh, automatically, and then see what we really need. And the, all these uh, models are actually found in this book. You can, those who have a copy, they, uh, they, they attest to that. They, you can already find them, like this first one is in page 20, 28, and you go on up to the placement. Yeah, the individual placement, which is actually the last, the last, uh, the, the last uh, table where the individual is actually placed uh, using the niche and then the interaction. The niche options or the niche abilities here, which is already here. And then you, are in, you interact it with the other exposures and you're able to see from your niche what really belongs to you and what does not belong to you. This is exactly what we are talking about. And therefore, you can... Ask any kind of a question, uh, you are able to, con to, get, uh, to get, you have my contacts, you can be able to ask any kind of a question regarding this. And comfortably, we can have everybody where they belong naturally, because we are natural. And we're able to move with the natural rhythm and find comfortably our natural home where uh, we actually make the most out of the least. Thank you very much, and may God bless you.